So in the previous video, we went through the theoretical part of distributed transaction using two-phase commit protocol. In this one, let's implement a two-phase commit protocol locally. Right? The idea or we, we basically continue our same example of Zomato's 10-minute food delivery. And what we'll do is we'll go through the different components that we would need or the different low-level details that we would need, understand the database schema, understand how two-phase commit protocol helps us ensure atomicity, like how it guarantees atomic transactions, we will do that. And more importantly, go through the code to see exactly how it's done. Okay, so just just to give context of so folks who have not seen the previous video, I'll link it in the i card and I've and I'll actually put it in the description as well. But just to skim it through, let me just go through the the the, the basics of it so that everyone's on the same page. Right. So what exactly is a distributed transaction? It's a transaction that spans multiple machines. Basically, in our case, it's the the, the transaction that spans multiple microservices. So the the scenario the scenario we take is ten minute food delivery by Zomato. The core idea here is like with respect to Zomato's principle, what it says that it will bulk purchase the food from restaurant, keep it in the store and have a fleet of delivery agents who are there to delivery to, to basically deliver the food within 10 minutes. Because the food is pre-purchased, it just needs to be heat. Uh, it just needs to be heated up and assigned it to a delivery agent to be delivered. But now to guarantee uh, a delivery under 10 minutes, what Zomato would have to ensure is that the food is available. Like when it shows to the user that the order is placed, right? This is very important. When it shows to the user that the order is placed, the food has to be available in the store and the delivery partner has to be available to deliver the food. If either of the two is not there, you cannot tell the user that you will be delivering the order in 10 minutes because what if food is not there? It will have to go to the restaurant and get the food. What if delivery agent is not there? Food will be heated up, but delivery agent is not there to deliver. So you cannot guarantee a 10 minute delivery if both of this. So this is a classical case of distributed transition, which is what we would be mimicking locally. Right? So here, the core part that we have to guarantee is unless both of them are there, which means unless the food is available and delivery partners are available, then only you will tell user that the order is placed. Otherwise, you will not tell the user that the order is placed, right? So order placing API should fail if either of the two conditions is not matched. So what exactly are we trying to solve with distributed transaction here? We are trying to solve that one order is assigned to one agent. And so basically one order has one agent and one food item. That's what we are trying to attain here. And the more important part from the user experience part is that a user should not see order placed if it cannot be fulfilled. Right? So the main thing that we are solving is resource contention. So let's say if there is one delivery agent, agent one, and that particular delivery agent, like that should not happen that two orders are assigned the same delivery agent or the same food item is not assigned to two orders, right? So resource contention is what we are solving, right? That too in a distributed setup. So the end goal here is our end user should never see order placed if we were not able to get one food and one delivery agent assigned to it. Right. So it's all about the user experience while solving for resource contention over here. Right. So the, 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 the two-phase commit protocol is pretty simple. What it says that it, it just splits the problem into two parts. First is uh, it splits the solution in the two parts, not the problem, solution in the two parts. The first phase is the reservation phase or the preparation phase. What it would do is... <coughs> Let's say you have three services, order, store and delivery, as we discussed in the previous video. So order service will talk to store service and say, hey, reserve food. Order service will talk to delivery service and say, hey, reserve an agent. This is not about assigning an agent to an order. It's just about reserving that particular person for delivery. Anyone can use it. Anyone. Like it's not just a specific order that for whom that particular agent is assigned. 
एनी वन इट जस्ट दैट एजेंट इज पुट ऑन होल्ड कि हे सम ऑर्डर इज एड यू हैव टू गोड सो यू आर रिजर्विंग एन एजेंट फॉर इट देन ऑर्डर्स देन नाउ दैट द प्रिपरेशन नाउ दैट द प्रिपरेशन फेज इज डन देर विल बी अ फेज ऑफ असाइनमेंट और देर विल बी अ फेज ऑफ कमिट वेन बिकॉज यू हैव केप्ट असाइड यू हैव रिजर्वड अ फूड एंड एन एजेंट नाउ the only thing that you have to do is just assign that food to an order and assign an agent to an order that's all you have to do so by splitting this into two separate phases we have we will achieve atomic transactions and you'll say ki hey but if i reserved something and but i did not but but the assignment failed due to some reason right so basically reservation reservation happened but assignment failed due to some reason so obviously you are not reserving something for eternity right the reservation will come with a timer and this timer is long enough to be honest the timer is long enough so that if the service goes under uh, if if basic service goes under maintenance or if it goes down when it come back there should be a chance for it to revive the transaction and obviously this being a critical service you would not want to let it go down for a very long time but in any case your reservation will not span hours right you would have a timer set which say that hey after this much time my resources would be free like the food packet that you reserved for a particular order will be free uh, will be now available for some other order to be picked so in this implementation what we are doing is we are keeping things simple to just understand how it is implemented and we will not go into the details of timer implementation so i'll assume that the timer is there for now what would happen because of this because we are not implementing uh, expiration what would happen is items would be perpetually reserved if there is any issue we will see that uh, in the demonstration as well the item will be perpetually reserved if there is any issue uh, while booking so if it is reserved but not booked so item would be perpetually reserved but ha uh, to solve that problem you just need an expiration on the key or cron job or a, or a redis key expression anything would do <clears throat> that's that's pretty simple but that is assumed but for just to keep it some otherwise the video would be too long to keep things simple we are not implementing timer but we'll get the gist we'll get the essence of it <coughs> so let's go through the schema of delivery service so we'll start with delivery service to understand what my core database schema would look like obviously i've not given exhaustive list of fields these are very specific list of fields that we need for distributed transactions to work fine so uh let's say i have a table called agents in my delivery service i have a table called agents agent has an id agent uh, the second column is is reserved what does this say this say that if this agent is reserved for any order any order not just a specific order but any order if this agent is reserved for any order yes or no basically a boolean field and an order id right so order id is the currently like the the order which the agent is currently serving is what this order id column will define right so three critical columns over here id is reserved and order id obviously you can pick and choose on more detailed implementation but i'm just taking it to the basics for us to understand the two phase commit protocols implementation right? then is reserved is true implies that agent is reserved for some order and order id is the order that the agent is currently serving so once the order delivery happens the the rows would be reset as an is reserved would be false and order id would again become null a basic basic like we are going with a very basic implementation but even scaling it is not really difficult because <clears throat> no matter how much the traffic is you have a you have an scaled up version of mysql one central database to hold that part of delivery service so you'll have few set of servers for delivery service each one of them making a call to uh, mysql db to basically to basically manipulate this table right and it basically gets request from orders service the second schema is for store service now this is an interesting schema because what i have done is i have split uh, my food items into two sections the first is food which means that let's say there is a particular restaurant but there is a particular dish let's say burger kings burger so this would have list of all food items obviously restaurant and all is missing i don't care about this in this implementation so here what it would have is it would have id and name just just for 
just for prettification sort of thing. So ID one burger one uh, name is burger, right? But then we have another entity called packets. These are actually barcoded packets which are placed in the store. So Zomato purchased it from the restaurant and placed it into the store, and every single one of that packet is barcoded or it's or it has an ID basically, right? Which means that when I am assigning a, a, a basically when I'm assigning a food packet or a food to an order, it's more like I'm assigning an actual packet with a specific ID to an order. So, so that exact packet will be delivered as part of that order. And just to keep things simple. So here the 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 packet schema would something like this: ID, food ID. So this is the this is a globally unique identifier for a packet. This is the food ID, which means that this packet belongs to this food, so that you can use it to list it onto a restaurant and whatnot. Then again, is uh, is reserved, which means if this packet is reserved for some order, and order ID. So, to which order will this be? Is this packet associated to? Right. So by splitting this, we'll get a very nice sense of row level locking that we would want to take, like. Playing at row level granularity or packet level granularity is what we'll what we'll achieve with this thing. Again, similar to delivery service, the flow, the architecture is pretty simple. You'll have store service talking directly to a scaled up version of MySQL to handle everything that you would want. Four APIs that we would be exposing, two on each: uh, delivery service and store service. Delivery service first uh, API. Slash delivery agent slash delivery slash agent slash reserve, which would reserve a delivery agent. Slash delivery slash agent slash book, which would assign a delivery agent to an order. I should have worked up on nomenclature, but you you basically get the gist. And second is store service, who whose job is to like first API endpoint is to slash store slash food slash reserve, which would reserve a packet for a particular food in the store, and slash store slash food slash book, which means. It would assign that packet to a particular order. Okay, now high-level architecture, pretty simple. Here, your order service is acting as your coordinator. The order service is the coordinator, which means it's an end-user facing service that your end-user, when trying to place an order, makes a call to this particular service, order service. And what order service will in turn talk to is order service will talk to store service and delivery service. So store service has its own database, delivery service has its own database. So pretty simple, and this is exactly what we'll be mimicking locally. Right. So the flow of the request or the flow of the communication between services goes like this. So user makes a call to order service saying, "Hey, place this order with for this food and whatnot." So order service will first reserve the food. When it says first reserve the food, it would the the call will go to store service and it would reserve the first available packet for that particular food. So if I say burger, the first available packet will be reserved for this. And as soon as it is reserved, it will be made unavailable for any other order to be reserved. Fine. That's how we are protecting our resource. We are ensuring an exclusivity of our resource. Hmm. Second, reserve agent, which means reserve the first available agent, which is there. But the basically from the fleet, reserve the first available delivery agent. Again, similar to food, we are reserving a delivery agent for some order. So once it is there, the food is there, the agent is there. We are done. We are done with it. The the people, the the person, and the food is reserved for some order. We are not guaranteeing which order. We are saying. Some order we are reserving that particular person. This was the preparation phase. Now coming to the commit phase, we'll call assign food. What assign food will do is it would assign the first reserved food that it could find, right? For a particular food ID, it would find the first reserved packet rather, first reserved packet, and it would assign it to an order, and then assign agent, assign the first reserved agent that we could find. And once all of these four are successful, we say order is placed. Right? If any of this is unsuccessful, as in if I'm not able to reserve food because let's say packets are over, if I'm not able to reserve an agent, let's say because everyone's there out on the delivery, we would return saying 
order is not placed. So it's very important for your end user. Like it's not about how your system works. It's more about what your end user experience is. Right? For your end user, what it would get? It would get order not placed or food item not available or delivery agent not available. Something, something basically depending on the use case, depending on the product, we can show a very fun, a very uh, fancy message out there. Right? Then assign food. If assign food is not there, which means that now what? Why would this fail? Like let's say reservation in any case the flow is if any of this reservation fails we are returning order not placed and which means that in actual two-phase commit protocol i done a reservation but i'm not booking it which means the items can be perpetually reserved but because of the timer the item would be made reavailable after some time right but in our implementation we are not doing that uh, we are not uh, uh, reviving an item to keep things simple but if we would do it the item would be made reavailable for some other order to be uh, to be reserving it right and then for assign food and assign agent if i am able to reserve food now the only job of my assign food and assign agent would be what to just assign that food to an order id because it was already reserved no one else was contending for it the only job that remains for my commit phase, it's just assigning food and assigning agent. So just a column change. So when this is happened, now this, the chances of this succeeding is very high. But in case it fails, first of all, why would it fail? It would fail because, because you have reserved, no one else is contending for it. So that's the best part, right? But why would it fail? Because service went down. Let's say your store service went down or your delivery service went down. When that happens, that downtime will be very minuscule. It will not be a gigantic downtime. It will be very minuscule downtime, which means you can have retries to try to book it. But, but if you would want to make it very strict, that's what, what I would propose for a 10 minute food delivery is to not, uh, this thing, uh, well, when, 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 when guaranteeing a very strict, uh, uh, distributed transaction. So say, if you are not able to assign food due to service being down, if you are not able to assign agent due to service being down, will not say that order is placed, will stay order is not placed. Which means only when all of these four are okay, then only will tell to the user that hey, order is placed. Obviously, actual implementation might vary because as business, you would want to accept as many orders as you can and then figure out a deliver, uh, then, then figure out a delivery agent to, to deliver the food. But hypothetically, if you'd want to make a very strong guarantee, when all of these four succeed, then only I'll say order is placed. Right? So with our implementation, some items might be, uh, uh, some items might be reserved, uh, might be perpetually reserved. It's just a job of a cleanup job to to, to basically revive them and with assign food one more possibility is there that hey my assign food happened but my agent service was down right so food was assigned to an order but my agent service was down what would happen in that case so when i say assign food which means the store was given a command to start heating up the food and preparing it for the agent to be and basically uh, preparing it for the delivery but my delivery service is down. So the packet is reserved, the packet is heating at the moment, but there is no delivery agent to do it. But here, if you think your end user experience is not hampered at all, because your end user, for your end user experience, the user saw what? User saw order is not placed because you ran out of food or you or no, no delivery agent there, right? Your end user experience is not hampered you might have some business impact because you accepted a, like you assigned a food to an order which is not ready to uh, which cannot be delivered because there is no delivery agent assigned to it ways to solve it is you may have retries you may have a background you you may have a background process that checks it repeatedly but that's a different pattern here what i'm guaranteeing is guaranteeing a seamless transactional experience for your end user so when both of them are there there only i'll work it otherwise i would not right and because we have reserved it there is no resource contention happening for them that's a very key point okay so now what are we focusing on we are focusing on that there is no 
inconsistent data. Like we are ensuring that no matter what happens, we are not, will not have an inconsistent data in our database, right? Our end user experience is not broken at all. Okay? So here, because we are not implementing timer or expiration or auto free up, once food packet or agent is reserved, they will remain perpetually blocked, right? But having an expiry solves this problem. Okay, so how are we ensuring, uh, uh, how are we ensuring atomic transactions to happen? So first of all, we are uh, with the, in the preparation phase, what we are doing is we are seeing that finding and reserving food happens atomically. Finding and reserving an agent happens atomically. Finding packet or an agent, or oh, sorry, assigning a packet and agent happens atomically. So all of these four transactions, all of these four updates that we are making across two different services, they are all individually done atomically. Which means once a food packet is reserved, it cannot be it cannot be made reserved again. Right. So once it is reserved, it's reserved. When we are locating a food packet, we will always locate the first unreserved packet. So which means we have reserved the capacity for that. Right. And similarly for assigning the, uh, when we talk about assigning, because it is reserved, the only job we have to do is just assign it to an order. So we are just, we are just lessening our scope of having failure and impact. Basically we are reducing our blast radius to be honest over here. Right. Okay. So by ensuring atomicity, we are ensuring that our current our concurrent transactions have no impact on it. To place the order, all four should succeed, right? Otherwise, you'll say order not placed. So end user experience is not getting hampered. If once you are very sure that you have food and you have delivery agent ready, then only you are saying to the user that hey, I'm there. Like I'm I'm basically be able to serve you or deliver the food to you in 10 minutes. If any of the service fail, we revoke the reservation. So this is an extra step to ensure that, hey, if any of the call fail, anything that I reserved, I can explicitly free up as part of it, but I'm not written it in the code, but huh, we can do that as part of, opti obviously a lot of optimizations can be done over here, but just to get that sense, uh, we are just implementing a very basic version of it. Then by adding a reservation state, what did we achieve? Like you'll say, ki, hey, if I have this part, like my, I, if I have a separate uh, uh, prepare phase or if I have a separate reservation phase and I'm I'm having a separate commit, what exactly are we getting out of it? Because I could directly assign or I could directly assign a food, I can directly assign a food to an order and uh, just wait for a delivery agent to be there or basically assign a food and a delivery agent to do that. But here the idea is you would not be doing both at the same time. So we are ensuring that we have the capacity to serve. Then only we are going forward and assigning it to it. So we are reducing the scope of, of inefficiency. It's not. And while doing that, we are ensuring that our end user does not get a poor experience. So we'll accept the order only when it is possible in our capacity to accept it and our exclusiveness to accept it, right? So by doing that, we are just reducing the scope of our inefficiency. The reservation is a process, is a contention heavy process. So let me solve that separately. And then assigning is a very lightweight assignment. So unless the service is down, there will not be any impact. So your assignment will always be successful because it's a very lightweight operation. So you are reducing the scope of inefficiency in your system by giving a solid, solid, solid experience to your end user, right? So let's go through the code and see the actual implementation of it on how that thing works. So I'll quickly go through, uh, I'll quickly walk you through my source code. So here what I have is I've written a very basic implementation in Golang. So where I have three services, so three repository, three services, but three, three will run on, uh, so, uh, the store service and the delivery service will run on their own separate port. So they're like totally separate processes out there. So what do I have is I'll walk you through my code. Wait, wait, wait. Huh. So here I have exposed two endpoints. So this is my delivery service. So I've exposed the first endpoint is slash delivery slash agent slash reserve, which would reserve a delivery agent. Right. Then it invokes a function called reserve an agent, which would reserve a particular agent in my DB. 
then reserve agent response it would return it da, da, da. and here i have another post request that says book an agent so as in assign an agent to uh, to an order right that's what i'm doing over here book an agent to an order right <coughs> and this service runs on port 8082 right and here what do i have so when i'm talking about the implementation part of it the reserve agent call that is there it starts a it starts a SQL transaction. It starts a SQL transaction and then it first gets a row. It first finds the first uh, agent that is not reserved and not serving any order, right? Which is not reserved and not serving any order is what it would find. So first agent which is available, it is finding it is taking an exclusive lock on it and once it has taken an exclusive lock on it, it is updating that agent and setting is reserved to true, which means marking that agent unavailable for any other order. So this is what is preventing multiple transactions happening in parallel to not go and book that same agent. So we are ensuring that we have enough capacity to serve it. We are not over committing to our user and that is very important when you talk about transactions right you are not over committing something last right win should not come we are reserving we are making it atomic we are reserving it for so we are reserving it to ensure that no two can update it at the same time so ensuring the capacity before we commit it to our end user right so this is what our reservation looks like then coming to book agent book agent what it would do very similar start a transaction it would find the first that is reserved but not serving any order so reserved is true and is order uh, and order id is null and then what we do is we update the agent set because now with respect to booking what we are doing we are marking is reserved false as in now the agent is not reserved but it is serving an order so we are updating an agent to be is reserved as false which means now he or she is available he or she is not reserved to be honest, but is serving a particular order. So this order ID when we are setting, it is still making him or her unavailable for any other order. Okay. And done. This is what we do when delivery service, this two API. Similarly, when we talk about the, when we talk about the store service, it would have two very similar function, food reserve and food book, same function. And here, with respect to the API implementation, again, pretty similar. So here, uh, the same thing, uh, reserve food goes like this, where I'm going through my table, finding the first unreserved food and for a particular food ID, as in I told you, right, that, that, that food stable, uh, ID one burger, that, that one thing, uh, food ID is something and order ID, on order ID is null, which means that first packet, select star from packets, where is reserved is false which means any packet that is unreserved and food id is equal to something which belongs to a particular food id and is not part of any order so we are finding the first unreserved packet and then reserving it as part of that one transaction right similar to how we reserved this part and then we are committing the transaction in any case of failure we are rollbacking it right then book food so similar to how we had book agent we are doing a book food over here where it says a select star for packets where is reserved is true. So finding the first packet that is reserved belonging to a particular food and which is not assigned to any order. And then we are updating it over here. Is reserved is false and order ID is equal to something. So it, this being done in one transaction ensures that no two concurrent database transaction will have any impact on those rows. By also by taking an exclusive lock on them right okay so these were the two services now i'll run the store service over here and the delivery service over here right i'm running the store service and the delivery service over here now what next now we need to have an order service so here order service i'm not making it an http based service but a very simple way on which i'm just concurrently assuming that I am the order service, so I'll be concurrently placing orders for a particular food item. So let's say I'm placing 10 concurrent orders 
for a particular food item and this means that at the end of my transaction there should be 10 delivery agent assigned to 10 uh, and 10 and 10 food packets assigned to one uh, assigned to 10 orders right so here i am uh, spinning up go routines basically i'm uh, basically what i'm doing uh, so so basically what i'm doing is i'm ensuring uh, i'm ensuring that so i'm i'm basically firing 10 transactions in parallel 10 uh, order placing in parallel and when i'm doing that the place order what it would say so the place order accepts a food id so i'm placing an order for a particular food id I'm getting an order or an error. If there is an error, it says that order not placed. So this is what your end user would see. So if there is any error, order not placed is what it would show to the user. Otherwise, I'll say that order is placed with a particular ID. Okay. And now what place order would do is place order would make four API calls as we just discussed. So place order is making literal HTTP calls to what? To first the food service to, uh, to store service to reserve the food. If there is any error, which means if the uh, response code is not 200, I'm directly saying food not available. As soon as food not available, it would return an error. So here I'm not proceeding forward. I'm returning an error saying that food is not available for me to do in, well, for me to place an order. So it would cascade here and say because error is here, I'll get an error. An error is not nil. It would say order not placed. So our end user experience is not broken. It would say that if I'm able to reserve the food or if I'm able to reserve an agent. So this is my preparation phase. Okay. Then I'm doing a assign a food to an order and assign a f uh, and assign an agent to an order. Right. So by running this four actual HTTP command, I'm actually mimicking a, a very small distributed system locally to just check on what happens and whatnot. So now let me play. So how many? Achha, before that, how many? Uh, da -da -da. Huh. So how many? Uh, what's our uh, db schema looks like so here i have agents agent as not assigned to any order and then i have packets so i have 15 packets and i have 10 delivery agents here when i have 15 packets each packet belongs to the same food id one which is what i've pre-populated the data with <coughs> and in food i have one and burger so that's just a foreign key reference that i would want to have right. so now if i run this code go run orders main.go what we would see that hey some orders are placed 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 because we ran 10 orders in parallel here because we ran 10 in parallel the 10 orders were placed and if we go through the database we would see that orders are placed over here all 10 delivery agents are placed over here and all the food packets you would see like uh, there were 15 packets uh, out of which 10 got placed after which uh, 10 got assigned to a particular order right so now if i run this code again what would happen because my delivery agent because my delivery agent is already assigned to a particular order it would give end user order not placed right so let's see that in action uh, I'll go through my ID once again. If I now run it again, it would give me order not placed for all of them because delivery agent not available, not available, not available, not available. Right? And now once it cross delivery agent, then it says food not available, food not available, delivery agent not because I'm running it in parallel. What's happening is it is it is contending for food and this because these are 10 go routines hitting in parallel. So what would this mean? This would mean that hey, food not available. Uh, delivery not available the idea is whichever go routine got scheduled first at the end it should be five delivery agent not available and for rest others because there were 15 food items and 10 delivery agent for next 10 orders you might see delivery agent not available or food not available once 15 are exhausted and it would say food not available so which is what we are exactly seeing delivery agent not available five times and then food not available five times Right, because delivery agent not available because then if I fire it once again you would see food not available because it was able to first it was able to reserve the food because there were 15 food but not but delivery agent was not there so what you would see in the database is you would see that 
after this my delivery agent assignment does not change because there were 10 delivery agent there were 10 delivery agent but if i see through my packet you would see all of these five are now reserved right which means that they are now exclusively there for in like they are exclusively reserved no other transaction like any new order coming in to get it they would not get any of this packet so that's why you are seeing food not available error right because food is actually not available because it is reserved now if you see we have here the way to not perpetually reserved like obviously there would be a clean up job or there would be a job that would be expiring these particular is reserved so let's say after 5 minutes all of this five row become un become available again some other order would come in and then it would get that same thing and if your delivery service is running and your order service is running it would attack uh, it would assign that packet and that agent to that order right so so long as your delivery service and your this thing uh, and your store service are working fine the only thing that would remain is like this assignment part but by ensuring that we have this reservation phase we are definitely guaranteeing definitely guaranteeing that if there is a transient error in your delivery service or if there is a transient error in your store service it is not having major impact on your system then right? it's all about getting that service up again and retrying so somehow having a clean up job it will start accepting new orders so new orders are not impacted existing orders for which some assignment happened but some did not you can have a very small clean up job but in the entire scene your end user experience is not getting hampered which is what the the beauty of distributed transaction is because at the end you would say either all or none is what you wanted to achieve you wanted to achieve atomicity right you wanted to achieve atomicity and this is how you attain atomicity over here right it's a pretty simple simulation and obviously this particular solution that we just discussed can very well be extended to so many other complex features that you can add for example a simple thread might just do a clean up and you can simulate the entire 10 minute delivery of zomato locally right so yeah that is it for this one i hope although a long video but i hope you see how easy it is to simulate a lot of things locally never be shy of implementing it just get your hands dirty into distributed transactions normal transactions sql and what not there is so much more to explore that and right. so i hope this video this long 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 video uh, helps you in understanding distributed transactions better obviously there are better ways to solve this problem i'm not denying that but this is my way of demonstrating how you can first of all implement distributed transaction second of all simulate a distributed transaction locally and third understand why those two separations are there how we are protecting uh, the common resource against contention uh, by adding exclusivity ensuring atomicity across all level across the transaction so that end user experience is not getting so i I've, I've, i've tried to cover a lot of those things in this one i hope uh, i hope i added enough value it was fun for me to write it to be really honest like maza aayega but uh, i hope you go and try i'm not making this code base open primarily because i would want you folks to you know write it and see the magic it's pretty simple code base as you saw like not not many files not many lines of code but when you do it you'll hit upon so many new things and you'll learn more about databases more about distributed transactions by getting your hands dirty rather than just watching me talk about it right i have just covered the foundational part but getting your hands dirty is the real way of learning that's what i would highly recommend you to do that's why deliberately i'm not making this repository open source so that you write it on your own and experience the joy that i felt the first time i distributed transaction work right so yeah that is it for this one if you guys like this video give this if you guys like this video give this video a thumbs up if you guys like the channel give this channel a sub and i'll see you in the next one thanks a ton